Um, so let's see, let me just share a little bit more about myself. My name is Jenny Trebell. Um, I am a student of Lama Sultra Malione, who is my main teacher. I met her 15 years ago and took refuge with her and have um, followed along with her teachings through this whole time. And in November, she gave me, after taking exams and um, writing a paper, I wrote about the presence of trees in the Buddha's life and how, using a lot of the research from Wendy Garland, how trees and the feminine presence in trees really helped um, set the ground or hold the container for the Buddha's awakening. So this is sort of, so, you know, I've been, I teach, you know, and this is just a really honor for me that Eve invited me to come and sub her class. Um, as as Kej was saying, we're gonna do a feeding your demons practice. And I'll share more about what that practice is. It's a, it's a practice I've been doing for 15 years. And it's a really beautiful practice, um, wild, uh, effective. Um, so, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that might be nice to know about me before we dive in. So how will we have our, we have about 90 minutes together, a little bit less now. It's, I'm going to orient us. It's Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. here. Hello to all of you online. There's a lot of us there. We're in San Francisco, Ohlone land. And we will be together for these 90 minutes. During that period, how we'll begin is we'll do a sit together to help ground us and maybe establish some um, perhaps stability or in our mind stream so that we feel good enough, not perfect, but good enough to dive into some of this work, which is really the work of being in our um dialoguing with our unconscious, with our demons. And then I'll talk a little bit about the process itself, about what the feeding your demons process process is. Any of us here have done it before? We done it? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Okay. And so for some of us, this new, I, I have fed so thousands, I mean, <laughs> thousands of demons. Um, um, so yes, uh, always something new. And uh, I want this to be, as always is the case, when Lama and her teachers teach this, I want, it, I want it to be anshul. So we'll be actually, of course, doing the practice, and I'll be guiding you through. And that portion takes about 30 to 35 minutes. It's a five-step process. And so that will, that's what we'll do. And at the end, we'll have some time to share and to connect with each other around our experience. Yeah. So that's kind of the lay of the land. All right. Well, let's um, begin by raising our bodhicitta. And you're taking whatever mudra is comfortable for you. Yeah. So this is, uh, as we may know, in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, there are three parts to every practice. This is the middle end. It's the raising of the bodhicitta, the practice itself, and then the dedication of merit. We'll be doing all three in the course of our time together. So, so let's raise our bodhicitta together as a group. And I, and I know we know this is this connecting to the energy in our heart center. It's said to reside there. And sometimes before we turn our attention there, we may not be aware of it. And sometimes we need more energy to really generate it or wake it up. So in a way, we're applying this method to this part of our being. And one way of application in this tradition tradition is that 
kind of making a wish or a heartfelt intention that our time together, that it be of benefit, you know, in whatever way, and may it benefit each of us. And also may that benefit in ways that we may know and not know, may it also touch all beings everywhere without one exception. I'm taking a moment to feel into as much of that that's available for you. Thank you. Thank you for your bodhicitta. And let's practice for, I don't know, maybe we'll sit for about six minutes or so. And yeah, it looks good, whatever's, and all, and all the, and all the Buddhist texts, it says, take a comfortable seat. Um, so let yourself be comfortable in whatever, in whatever seat. We know there are more austere methods of holding ourselves in practice. This, so we may know the Buddha's path was the middle way. So not too tight, not too loose. There want, you know, we want to have a kind of uprightness, a kind of sense of like meaning business when we sit, but also a looseness. And you can apply the hands wherever. I like them on my thighs because it grounds me, but wherever feels good to you. <clears throat> So what we're doing now is we're coming into presence with ourselves. And there is a sweet way that we can do this. We are kind of becoming aware of our body breathing. It's like this tender up and down that the chest makes. And this feeling that there is so often the opportunity for this stillness to find us. And now we're allowing ourselves to fall back in together. And this is the simple, you know, shamatha where we're becoming mindful of the in-breath and becoming aware on the, you know, physical or bodily level, that feeling of breathing. And we're not, not trying to turn the breath in any way. And this seems an important, important point, just being with our breath, with our body, as she is, as he is, as they are. And when the mind wanders as the mind, the mind will, we can gently return our awareness or bring it back to a sense of presence and the sense of being in our body, 
being in these chairs, you know, with these hands, these feet, this breath. And then for these last few minutes together, I want to give the second part of the shamatha instruction as it is in, from my teacher, which is that now we follow the out-breath with our mind. And at the end of the out-breath, there is a space or a gap right before the breath turns to the inhale, a kind of openness or spaciousness. And as we follow our natural exhale, we let our mind rest in that or find it, even as we continue inhaling, inhaling. Let's do another minute or so. Following that exhale and seeing if you can find that space, that openness that we can flash onto. Sometimes it's described as a flash of lightning in the dark. And we let our mind rest in that openness even as we inhale again. Thank you. Thank you for practice. Yeah. <sighs> so <clears throat> I'd like to begin by just um, talking a little bit about what a demon is. And then I thought it would be nice if we had a little time to break up into groups uh, of partners and share um, share with each other what it is that has been kind of weighing on you and right? what demons have been kind of preoccupying you. So, so <clears throat> demons as, as, Cage was saying, or is anything that blocks your energy, anything that blocks your experience of freedom. So a demon can be anger, a demon can be jealousy, a demon can be depression, grief, anxiety, grief. Did I say that? Anxiety. <laughs> um, you know, we can have demons that come up in relationships. You know, uh, we can have attach attachments. We can have um, financial worry demons. We can have, you know, have demons around uh, our children, um, our partners. So um, what I thought would be nice if we could just pair up or maybe maybe a group, Sophie, and share a little bit about 
what you notice has been preoccupying you. And of course, you know, we have demons that can come up at different phases of our life, maybe, or we have a phase where that was really intense, you know, that emotion, that, that, that pattern. And um, what's, what's said when we do this process, it's best to work with a demon that's present for you now, that's most up, you know? Um, so it might be nice just to take a few moments and I'll, I'll share more about this as we go, of course, but to connect with each other and share and share a little about what your, uh, you know, like what's been weighing on you, what's been keeping you locked and yeah. And then for you all, hello everyone on uh, Zoom, perhaps write in, can they write in the chat if they want to go into breakout and if they don't, they can just relax. I'm sorry, I don't know how to make breakout rooms, but if Karen, if someone there knows how to do that, um, they can, that'd be great. Okay, well, maybe we can figure that out. Yeah. I know how to do that, but I can't do that in this. I can put them in groups, so maybe I can come to it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so maybe you find a little partner, two or three, whoever feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Take five minutes, yeah. <laughs> and those of you who are who are on the cutter don't worry if you don't want to go into a breakout room you can Dharma Collective, we lost your sound. You're muted now. Dharma Collective is muted. And Victor in um, room four asked for help. And I'm sorry, I don't know how to do that.
Dharma Collective is muted. Thank you. That's good. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I always love. I always love the moment when we go into these little groups to talk about our demons because the energy suddenly gets really up and happy. <laughs> Even though we're talking about the demon, you know, the obstruction, it's really. And then as you all were talking, I got a wave of gratitude, just feeling grateful that we're all here together, you know, right now in the middle of all this and um, doing this kind of work together. It feels, um, well, it's my life's work, but it feels so so important and so beautiful. So thank you all for coming and, and just leaning in together. Yeah. So <clears throat> did we come to any, any demons, like maybe one or two? <laughs> what are we, what's in the room? What are we thinking? Or what did you, I mean, if, if you want to share, it might be nice to hear just from a few of us, what's been weighing on us. Um, and we have that mic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. we have a microphone. I can pass them on. And then for those of us who are online, and yeah, feel to write in. Yeah. And just, you know, when we share just um, essence, of course, so we have enough time for everyone. Oh, everyone, oh, great. I have this project that I'm so excited about, and I know it's going to work, but I can't get out of my own way to get it started. Uh huh. Yeah, I was just saying, I know who I need to call. I know what I need to say. I know it's going to be well received, but I can't just. So what is your name? Chris. Yeah, Chris. Hi. So like, so Chris is, we don't know maybe what that demon's called. Maybe she'll name it. I don't know, but she could also work with that feeling. You know, you know, you could. It's the feeling of when you've driven partway into a ditch and, and your tire is just spinning yeah. like this. Yes, yes. That's a familiar feeling, yeah. So okay. maybe my demon is in a ditch. In a ditch, yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, so you see if it ends up being what you work with, you know, sometimes our demons have names like rage, you know, or like anger or... Um, self-doubt, I, I have that one a lot, or anxiety, you know, I have that one a lot. Um, you know, and sometimes they don't have a name or we don't yet know what the name is. We just feel like, oh, you know, I don't know that feeling. Like maybe you never feel that, but I feel that sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name? Heather. Heather, yeah. This is my first time here. Oh, no. uh, I'm a, I'm a newbie oh. uh, and I'm a newbie with my friend Chandra who I brought and our newbie friend Adam who we were paired with so the Hi. three of us are newbies uh, and we started building an apartment building of these demons and the ground floor is certainly fear fear yeah and the next one is shame <laughs> And then the next one is like doubt. And so we're working really hard on this and I'm not sure which floor I want to be on, but we had a really beautiful conversation of like realizations of selves of like very different, different space that we occupied because of the things that were happening, but that there were commonalities of humanity that created spaces of like, like connection really, I think made it feel as though we could find spaces of like safety, even though uh, there were these demons sort of present in the space. So that's- Aww. Thank you so much. It was beautiful to hear. Hey, wait, why did it go fear? Shame. Fear then shame. And then- uh, <laughs> Doubt. Doubt, yeah. Yes. We keep going, huh? <laughs> no, I, don't want to do I don't know if it's- like, <laughs> So like, what do they call it? The penthouse? Penthouse. <laughs> like, yeah. Anger maybe, I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he, has a, he has an idea. <laughs> penthouse, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. It's nice to talk about them because we know with any of our um, demons or, you know, in one lens, we could call them traumas or shadow parts or, you know, all different language we have in the Western psychological framework. Um, you know, they are, we know deep down they are our 
woundings and um, and that's why I like, you know, this is a practice one can do alone. This is why I really like practicing in a group because it just takes that kind of stickiness or shame or embarrassment we can feel about some of ours, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to share maybe one more? Can we do the practice? Does anyone online want to share? You all just, yeah, feel free. Okay. <clears throat> How are we? Okay, we got good timing. I'm going to share a little bit about the lineage. Did you, is that hand? No, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll share a little bit about the lineage for some of us who don't know this. So we just have a context of where this comes from, which is important. And then um, I'll talk a little bit about the process itself, just some like, you know, I don't want to overwhelm us too much, but just some like little, like little detail, we're going to run it. And then, and then I lead you through it. And that's the same leading that you'll get from any teacher who's certified to do this. There's a script, a script follow, and you really like, you can't mess it up. You know, and you just, it's always ends up working out. You just kind of go through it and follow, follow along with, with the guidance, you know? So, mm. If, uh, this this practice, this feeding your demons, come, comes from an 11th century yogini named Machik Labdron. And she lived in Tibet from like the 1050s. They say she lived 99 years, you know, 1050 to 1150. And she was really, I think, what we'd, we would consider now a spiritual genius. And she is the only person that has, in Tibetan Buddhism, has a lineage that's original to Tibet, um, and meaning some of the other lineages have their roots um, in, in India and some of the tradition that came up from India during that time. And my teacher developed this method, Feeding Your Demons, um, from a traditional Tibetan practice called chut. And chut means to cut through. And it's a really kind of beautiful, wild, very Tibetan practice in which you sing and you play a chud drum and you ring a bell. It has, it has shaman roots and you're visualizing, and this may sound kind of wild, but you're visualizing offering your body, literally offering your body to beings who, you know, almost for protection or to feed them what they need. So she my teacher, when she realized she was teaching this in the 70s and 80s to a lot of Western people, she was understanding that maybe the nuance wasn't really kind of landing. Like, what does that really mean to feed oneself, to feed someone a demon? Like, what is that? So she developed through a process, this practice, the feeding your demons process. And the root of this, and I'll just tell a, sh a short story, is from this woman who originated it, Machik. And when this was a story from she, when she was a very young woman, young woman, she was in the Himalayas in Tibet, and she was studying, um, practicing in a monastery, in a gompa, like in a temple, you know, and she's receiving empowerments, which is something that happens in the Tibetan tradition where you receive blessings from the wisdom beings. And it put her in such a state. It said that she rose up from her seat and she danced. It said she danced the 23 dances of the Dakinis. And after she danced, danced that she flew through the walls of the temple and landed herself in this tree. And the tree stood at the side of a lake. And it wasn't just any lake. It was a haunted lake. The Tibetans did not like this lake. I mean, they, water spirits lived in there. They wouldn't even look at it when they walked by. And when she got the tree, she took off her clothes and she became, she was naked in the tree, which was even more wild for an 11th century Tibetan woman because they're not, you know, uh, the culture is different from we could say now. And um, the, the water spirit, the Naga, the king of the Nagas was so upset that she was in his tree that she rose up from the, the water and he rose up from the water and faced her and was sort of like getting in her face saying like, leave, leave this tree. And she sat there. She's 20. 
in perfect samadhi. Her mind didn't waver. So, you know, we know that there are these st origin stories. Buddha had a similar story when the Maras come. And the Maras, their iconography often shows the Maras as beings, right, in the air. But what we also know is that really the Maras were manifestations of his own mind that were trying to turn him or convince him. Um, and he was able to sort of, as the story goes, stay in his seat, in his truth, and eventually, as, you know, sort of disappeared. So in the same way, this, um, this, this origin story, the, the, the king of the Nagas rises up and she doesn't move. She's not afraid. And then he gets the other water spirits to come up and she can continues to face them. And she says, um, you know, take me basically here, here, here I am, come eat me. And they can't believe her fearlessness. They can't believe her generosity. And they say, oh, okay. And they vow in that moment to protect her for lifetimes, her and every student that practices in her lineage. So that is the seed story for her that gave her this like light bulb moment that when we have these demons or these maras or these obstructions that seem to appear out of nowhere that though the instinct may be to to turn and and kind of run away and not look at it because it's painful or we want to turn to and just scream at it or you know or who knows we, we have different methods this was a unique one she turned towards it and fed, fed it, offered generosity, which is, it's a method and it's a skillful method because what happened is that those, uh, those demons became allies. So in this process, very similar, like it's called feeding your demons, but we could also say feeding your demons and transforming them into allies, you know? It's two parts. So that demon energy, that grief, that anxiety, that whatever it is that's blocking us, holding us, is the actual energy that becomes the ally. You know, it becomes the awakening, which is also so um, central to the Vajrayana tradition. Yes, so... I know I have a cousin who's a firefighter and every time if I'm out with him with him and there's alarm, you know, or something, he turns and runs towards the alarm. You know, it's, it's his instinct, you know, I'm like, get the hell out of there, you know, and he's, he's trained in that. Um, yeah. So I'll pause there. <laughs> it's, I like to give the overview and to give the lineage of where it comes from. You know, it has a thousand year old roots, which is, I think, really cool. And that the, that is alive uh, in the space when we do this work. And um, that's special. If I feel that's special. Yeah. Okay. I talked a lot just then. So mm, let me see, see. Oh. <laughs> I, I sometimes when I teach this I give the example of um, a demon that comes up for me around my kids which is that I really cannot handle making them tea like something about the whole tea program they are I don't like how they steep the tea I don't like the whole thing just gets me really like really like work you know and I often use the example like in that scenario when they're like making the tea and like not leaving the water bag in long enough. So then it's like really weak or then they're like getting the honey and like putting the honey in the tea and it's like making a mess. And my whole energy system is like ramping up, you know, demon is getting activated, you know, mm -hmm. in this scenario, I always like say, 
are my children the demon? No, yeah. Is the tea bag the demon? That honey, you know? No, no, no. The, the demon is whatever is arising in me that's blocking my experience of just letting them have tea. And what that is in me is a kind of impatience. And it doesn't just come up with that. That's the, easy, the easiest thing, you know, uh, a kind of impatience that I can have, a kind of like this feeling, you know, which of course, of course, I could live my whole life and never feed that demon, you know. That's one way, you know. But as I work, I work with a, um, I don't know, something. I thought I had done enough feedings on it. And then just last week, like I thought they were microwaving water with the tea bag in it. And I thought, oh God, no, still alive. <laughs> I really thought I was so proud. I'm like, I think I, wow, good job, Jenny. I think you. And then out of nowhere, like I see my son put it in the microwave. I'm like, oh my God, he's microwaving it. I mean, so. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's, you know, we're going to start moving into the, uh, the practice itself. Yeah. And I'll just say a few things, uh, again, about what to choose. You may know like what you want to work with, you know, but again, the instruction is whatever is draining your energy right now, you know, like it's been up for you. Um, it can be a demon from a difficult interaction. I have my notes here. Or in the way you see yourself responding sometimes to situations uh, can be a bigger narrative in your life. You know, am I good enough? Am I whatever enough? You know, all these things. Um, yeah. And if you're working with a demon in a relationship, the other person is not the demon. I know, hard to, <laughs> hard to, that's a hard one to swallow, but yeah, the other person isn't, isn't the demon. Uh, it would be your, your feeling or what's arising in the relationship. Okay, and then there's, there, there is a part in this practice where, the, where you ask your demon that you, you're, you're gonna, I guide you that you're gonna externalize the demon. You're gonna see the demon personified in front of you and you're gonna ask them, what is it that you want? And what is it that you need? So those are a layered question. The want is like, well, like in my tea example, I just, I just want you like not to make a mess, you know, whatever. The, the need, the deeper kind of, um, I would say more of the soft spot in that situation, I probably need more support. So I'm less on edge, you know, or if in the case of, Drug addiction, of course. What do I want? Well, I want the thing, you know, but um, the substance. But underneath that is the need. And it may be, you know, I need holding. I need care. I need love. I'm not sure. Whatever, whatever it would be for you. So that, those are going to be the two parts that are important to know. Um, if we're working, if you're working with a demon or a trauma that you know causes you to disassociate, you know, our intense traumas can do that. If we've had sexual boundary ruptures, it can do that, you know? So if you know that you're going to be working with a demon that causes you to disassociate or to leave your body, then when we come to the part, the point where we dissolve our, our, our body into nectar in order to feed the demon what it is that it wants, don't dissolve your body. You just stay intact and you feed the demon from, uh, the nectar in your heart, unlimited supply from your heart. Okay. Okay, good. And then, you know, we have enough spaces. So how we set this up is you're going to have two chairs facing each other. Some of us who have done this know we have room, right, Karen? We've been talking? Yeah, okay. More chairs in the back. Or what do you think? Do you do? Or just standing, maybe? Or, or <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, and yeah, we see. Um, if it's comfortable for you to sit on the floor, you can do that. But what you want are two two seats. So you're going to be having one seat and you'll be switching seats back and forth. So we'll just take a few minutes to, yeah. Can, can, you, can you explain this idea a bit more about not disassociating and then dissolving? 
like if you do tend to dissociate, yeah, okay, so I'm so glad. So if you know that happens, then that part in the practice, when I ask you to, when the, the, the guide is to dissolve your body into nectar, then instead of doing that, you would just stay as you are and feed the nectar from your from your heart. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like sometimes when we, at least in my experience, when we experience trauma, we can kind of leave our body. We kind of kind of go up and out, and we stop feeling. So if you know a feeling, so if you know that you do that, then um, I would just do. You don't need to visualize that you're going to dissolve your body entirely. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. And for those of you at home online, yeah, you, you could just set up two chairs or two places on the on the ground with yourself. Yes. See a newbie. <laughs> Yes, yes, but yes, yes, yes. So once we're in our seats. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah. So good. It takes always just a little time to get settled. Yeah. So you're in one seat and you have the open seat in front of you. So that open seat will be where you will personify your demon. So, you know, as we know, sometimes these shadow parts, these demons can get stuck in us. So we're taking them out of our body and beginning a dialogue process with them in the hope, in the hopes that energy will integrate, will begin to integrate. So it's important and I'll guide you to switch places, you know, through the process back and forth. It's all very self-explanatory as we go. And then if you can, to keep your eyes closed as much as possible through the process. Mm -hmm. And then um, the last thing is for some of us, visualization can be difficult. For some, it comes super easy. You know, for some, it may take time and don't worry. Um, I'll guide you in that too. And sometimes if the demon or the, the being doesn't appear, you can sort of just imagine what would it look like or, and I'll guide you through that. If it doesn't come easily, whatever. Yes. Good. Any questions before we dive in? And again, it's about 30 minutes, the practice. In terms of pacing, you know, we're it's such a big group, so I'm going to take my pace. Some of you, it'll be too much time, some too little, but, you know, we'll we'll find the middle point as best um, we can. Excuse me, Jenny. Um, Elizabeth yeah. had a question. She mentioned she had a, an injury and can't move between seats, so she's kind of wondering what oh. can she do. Okay, so um, thank you. Thank you for... Maybe um, just so you can can't since, hi since you can't move between seats hi Elizabeth see how it feels it just to kind of switch your body then a little bit this way and then this way can you do that yeah, I yeah. Can do that. thank you yeah yeah okay good okay so let's take a moment of silence so you can see what it is that you want to work with what uh, what what demon what um feeling what obstruction has been weighing on you, weighing on your heart, obstructing this easy feeling of, um, and of joy, of freedom. And again, you can't choose incorrectly. Just choose whichever is coming to you. Just trusting your instincts. Seeing what might be most helpful for you right now.
allowing yourself to take a moment to come back into presence. We'll begin with the nine relaxation breaths. So close your eyes and keep them closed as much as possible until the end of the process. And I'll be reading through now. We'll begin by taking some deep relaxation breaths. So first, breathe into any physical tension that you are holding in your body. Then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Now breathe into any emotional tension you're holding. Notice where you're holding emotional tension in your body, then hooking that tension with the breath. Release it with the out breath. Now breathe into any mental, mental tension or worries you are holding. Noticing where you're holding mental tension in your body, then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. And we'll generate together a heartfelt motivation to practice for the benefit of yourself and all beings. Thinking about the demon you've chosen to work with, perhaps remembering a particular time or incident when it came up strongly, then mentally scan your body, body and look where in your body you're holding this demon most strongly. Where in your body you're holding the demon most strongly. Remembering a particular time or incident when it came up. Notice where the demon is held in your body. Now imagine it has a shape. What is its shape? If it had a color, what color would it be? What is its te texture consistency? What's its temperature? Now intensify the awareness of the energy in your body. Bring your attention to it. Now allow the shape with its color, consistency, and temperature to move out of your body and become personified in front of you. As a being with face, eyes, limbs, and so on. If an inanimate being appears, invited to become a being with arms and legs and so on. What size is it? What is its color? <clears throat> what is the surface of its body? What's its density? If it had a smell, what smell would be associated with the demon? If it made sounds, what kind of sounds would it make? 
Does it have a gender? What is the look in its eyes? What's its emotional state? Mm -hmm. What is its char character or personality like? So allowing this demon to like, come to life in front of you. And now notice something about it that you didn't see before. Something that you didn't see before. Now we're going to ask uh, the demon the following questions, repeating them silently one by one after me. So we'll be now asking the demon questions. You can repeat them silently. What do you want? What do you really need? What do you really need? How will you feel? when you get what you really need? How will you feel when you get what you really need? Now immediately switch places and keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. You can face your current seat. And if you're standing, you can face your seat. Good, so we've changed places. See to the demon. Take a moment now to settle into the demon's body. Feel free to adopt the posture or make a gesture the demon might make if it's helpful. Otherwise, just sit or stand facing your normal self facing your normal self. How does it feel to be in the demon's body? How does it feel? How does your normal self look from the demon's point of view? Now, answer the question silently, imagining you're speaking as the, de the demon. Imagining you're speaking as the demon. What I want, want is... What I want is... What I really need is, what I really need is, when I get what I really need, I will feel. When I get what I really need, I will feel. I take note of this final answer. When I get what I really need, I will feel. 
taking note of that answer. And now return to your original seat. Yeah, good. Taking a moment just to settle back into your own body again. Yeah, that's good. Taking a moment to settle back into your own body. Uh huh. And see the demon again in front of you. Seeing the, seeing the demon of you. Now, remembering what the demon said it would feel if it got what it really needs, evoke that feeling and allow this feeling to spread through your entire bare body. Evoke that feeling and allow that feeling to spread through your entire body. Now dissolve your body into a nectar that has the quality of this feeling. Dissolve your body into a nectar that has the quality of this feeling. And if you're not dissolving your body, then you stay as you are. And the nectar will come from your heart. Notice the color of the nectar. Notice the color. Then feed the demon this nectar and notice how, this, how the demon makes it in. Feeding the demon the nectar. Notice how the demon takes it in. Feeding the demon the nectar. Noticing how the demon takes it in. An infinite supply of nectar flows to the demon. Infinite supply and nurtures it to complete satisfaction. And notice if the demon changes as it takes in the nectar. Feed the demon until, until it is completely satisfied. Remember, there is an infinite supply of nectar.
feeding the demon until it's completely satisfied from an infinite supply of nectar. Now, if the demon is still feeding, imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. Imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. And once the demon is completely satisfied, Notice if a being remains. <laughs> if there is a being that remains, ask it, ask it if it is your ally. If it says yes, then you'll work with that. If it says no, or you're unsure, or if the demon dissolved during the feeding, if it dissolved completely, then you can invite an ally to appear. <clears throat> See the ally in front of you. See the ally in front of you. If an inanimate being appeared, imagine what it would look like if it were personified. What size is it? What color? What is the surface of its body like? What's its density? Letting the ally just kind of begin to come to life for you, whatever, whatever way it is. If it had a smell, what smell would be associated with it? If it made sounds, what sounds would it make? Does it have a gender? And what's the look in its eyes? What's the look in its eyes? What's the ally's emotional state? What's its character or personality like? <clears throat> and this is the last one. Notice something about the ally you didn't see before. Now ask the ally these questions and you can repeat the questions silently one by one after me. How will you help me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I access you? So repeating those questions. And now in the same way we did with the demon, with the eyes closed, we'll switch places again. This is for the last time. Yeah, that's good. 
And just taking, uh, taking a moment to settle now into the body of the ally. Settling into the ally's body. Feel free to adopt the posture or gesture of the ally if it's helpful. How does it feel to be in the ally's body? How does it feel to be in the ally's body? How does your normal self look from the ally's point of view? How does your normal self look? From the, from the ally view. Now answering the question silently, speaking as the ally, I'll give you the first part. Answering the question silently, speaking as the ally, I will help you by... I will help you by... I will protect you by. I will protect you by. Bye. I pledge I will. Speaking as the ally, I pledge I will. And this is the final question. You can access me by. You can access me by. Now you can um, return to your original seat. This will be the last, it's the last change. Yeah, that's good. I'm taking a moment to settle back into your own body. Settling back into your own body. and see the ally in front of you. Settling back into our own body and seeing, seeing the ally in front of you. If a satisfied demon remained at the end of the feeding for you, then you may, inv you may invite it out. If that was the case for you, you can imagine that that satisfied demon dissolves into light and that light integrates into you. And now for everyone else, for everyone actually, look into the ally's eyes. Look into the ally's eyes and feel its energy pouring into your body.
as you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips, and throughout your, throughout your whole body. Notice how this feels. Now imagine that the ally dissolves into light. Notice the color of this light. Feel this light dissolving into you. Integrate this luminosity into every cell of your body as though all your cells were bathed we're being bathed in light. As though all of your cells were being bathed in light. Take note of the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. Take note of, note of the feet. And now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve. Now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve. And rest in the state date that is punched after the dissolution. Just rest. Now we'll gradually, gradually come back to your, to your body, recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. Gradually coming back to your body and recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. Yeah, and as you come back and now as you open your eyes, can maintain the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body, even as you kind of look around, reorient a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We did it. It's good. Take a moment to stretch and we. Well, um, we started late, so I can go over a few minutes a little bit where the timing is a little bit off. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're good. Yeah, so maybe, let's, would it, is it worth it to, I guess we can just stay like this, just turn, right? We don't need to put the chairs back. You can do that after. Yeah. So take a moment with your, whoever you partnered with in the beginning to share, you know, whatever part you may want to share about this. If you feel that you don't, you're not ready to share or talk, then you can just request to listen as well. So sharing any part of your experience and we'll come back together as a group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
So for fun, some of us, it's our, it's our first time, you know, and some, we're used to, did your partner, she's coming? Okay. and for those um, practitioners online and if you if you feel comfortable and you want to share anything in the chat go ahead and um, we, we can share the group as well or if you had questions might folks online raise their hand and then we can call on them they can unmute i can you can unmute and have them speak which is this? Can people online raise their? They can. They can let me know they have a question, and then I can unmute them, and they could speak. has everyone had has everyone had time to share a little bit each person good time okay let's well let's um let's come back back together so yeah i saw you doing that on front of going in it's back was crazy is it that was good i just thought oh it's good you you knew what to do yeah so okay well that's that's feeding your demons that's the process for how many of this was it was it our first time oh so a lot yeah i mean yeah. in this class or in reality in <laughs> this isn't reality so yeah <laughs> Yeah, any anything you anything you all the time. That is the way you talk about it. Yes, 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 yeah. Uh, good. So, well, you know, we have just a few minutes if we wanted to share or ask questions about our process, and then you know, and we'll close our time together tonight with dedicating the merit, um, as we always do. So, before we close, sometimes it's nice to hear a little bit from the community of what the process was like or to share. Um, yeah. 
Um, so I, I think what I really appreciate about the process is that um, oftentimes when I confront my demons, I, I, my, my knee jerk reaction is to get very adversarial. Yes. And I'm like, this is me. That's you. Yeah. I'm going to dig in my heels and then, yeah. you know, and then demon digs in their heels even further. Yeah. Um, so what I really liked about the, the switching of spaces um, is that I think it really helped create that sense of empathy for yeah. um, the demon. And then, um, then getting into a mode of sort of reconciliation with men and then through that process then going through a process of self-reconciliation yes right? like to like reconcile that that inner demon within yes yes how do you feel now after having done the process balanced yeah yeah, yeah. thank you what's your name i'm chris chris thank you chris yeah that's true. What my teacher talks about is that in the ignoring the demon or the fighting the demon or all these things and not seeing the demon actually gives it more power in a way. So the looking, looking at it, the turning to it, though it's hard, does begin to disarm. And we know, you know, also, you know, it's made more conscious, you know, mm -hmm. we can actually see it, literally work with it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else want to share? So many great steps. I love the process when I change place and I see myself mm -hmm. from the demon's eyes and then from the ally's eyes. That part is always tender for me somehow. Um, anyone else want to share? Yeah. Yes. Can we can we pass him the mic? Um, so my, my name is Ulysses and thank you for the uh, process. It was, it was pretty interesting. I've done this before and this time it was, um, very radically different than the last time I did this, which I thought that was also interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, what I was working on today was, um, or the demon was, um, I guess financial worry, yeah. so that stress, right? I, I'm on my own business um, owner, and so that's always like looming over my head. Um, and so when you, you know, you were like, "What does it look like?" I thought it was really interesting. It was just a black box, mm. um, very dense. So you know, I, it was you can open it seamless. And then when you said, when you said, "Okay, I'll do something," it literally turned into me but with those same characteristics, just, it was oh. like, I was looking at myself, but it was, a, I was, you know, that same material dense, mm -hmm. like this super shiny black sleek, no emotions, orderless, like just very stale. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, and after like looking at myself from the demon's perspective, I look larger. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and then when I switched back and I was looking at after it transformed and looking at the ally, the ally was definitely balanced and larger than I was, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I, I, I thought that was um, just pretty. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to share? Anyone else want to share? Going once, going twice. <laughs> yeah. This is my third time doing this. And it, 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 for me, that repetition is helpful yeah. in moving, pa moving past the consciousness yeah. of it. And yes. it, it was this time around, it was um, a lot more vivid and moving. Yeah. Yeah. That imaginal facility can, you know, kind of wake up more and, you know, some people think that way it's natural for some, you know, we have to work with it, but I'm glad to know it's something is freeing up there for you. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you for, for joining me tonight and for practicing together in this, in this way. Um, so let's, let's close and dedicate the merit. <laughs> 
Yeah, if, they, if you like the hands in prayer at the chest, which, you know, every, anyway, feels good to you. Allow um, yourself or our awareness, our consciousness to come back into our body. And in these closing breaths here together, becoming conscious or aware of the feeling in you of some of that encumbered energy maybe uh, transformed or moved a little bit. Managing back on the wisdom of your ally, which as we know is none other than a part of yourself. And we dedicate the merit. So any sweetness, any wisdom, any sense of care, compassion, that we felt that we have experienced in our time together may it also go beyond this, this small room in the center of this city and may it, may it move out and touch all beings in ways known and unknown, near and far, without one exception. And in the Tibetan tradition, sometimes we imagine this is light and we can imagine this kind of flowing into or around the world, reaching the places of deepest suffering right now. May all beings benefit. Thank you so much. Thank you for your practice. Thank you.